Hi guys, it's Joe with Climbing Tree, and today we're going to talk about the Raspberry Pi computer. Um, it's not the food, I really love that stuff, but we're talking about a small credit card sized computer that can help you and your kids learn about computer programming. That was actually the original reason it was built. Nowadays people use it to make media streaming centers and uh, smart devices, and but it was originally built to help teach kids computer programming by giving them a small affordable computer that's easy to tinker with. So we're gonna get in and hack a game as sort of a first dive into programming. Um, so let's let's start on that. We'll open up this menu and we'll go to games and we can see that there are these Python games. These are games written in the computer programming language Python. Now Python is a well-respected language in the community and it's powerful and it's also simple which makes it a good language for beginners. So we'll go to the file manager instead of opening up the game from the start menu there we'll open up the file manager and open up Python games folder and let's scroll down to Tetramino. It's a game that I like to mess around with. Um, and you notice that I've opened up this window it's called an IDE, Integrated Development Environment. And it has all of our code. This is where you write code. And it's, you know, there's just lots of letters and symbols. Uh, don't worry about understanding all of it right away. Even if you've been programming for a while, you probably would take a little bit to absorb what's going on here. Um, but right away, you can start off to notice some things that do make a little sense. Like, here are some words that you recognize, color words. And we will use those in just a minute. But first, let's run the game. So we'll click Run, and then Run Module. It'll pop up this Python shell which executes the code, which results in the game popping up right here. So it says press any key to play. I'll go ahead and turn it on. You can hear the music going, and it's just like Tetris, right? So it's Tetris coded in Python. And um, you gotta line up these blocks and try to make lines clear and things like that. Uh, it's a pretty fun game. And I'm totally gonna make this line clear. All right. So let's try to think about some things we might want to change. Uh, I see I see this blue outline here, and I'm I'm thinking, you know what? I want to change that to be red. So why don't we do that? Um, you notice we have these color words again here. If we find blue, uh, we can change the data that's stored inside this this blue variable. These are called variables. Um, blue is the name of the variable, and on the right hand side is the data that's stored in the variable. And these numbers might not make sense to you, but they will in a second, because up here we have labels. This R stands for red, this G stands for green, and this B stands for blue. And so here in this blue variable, we have stored 155 blue, 0 green, and 0 red, which makes blue. Uh, the max is 255, but 155 is a good amount. But let's turn that to 0 blue, and instead make it 155 red. And if we save this, we'll have to hit Save As, so in order to not overwrite the original file. If you did, it's not the end of the world, but let's uh, not overwrite it this time. And we'll call it mod color, and, because we modified the color. Now I already have a mod color file here, so I'm gonna overwrite it. And then we'll run it and see if our change took effect. Okay, and it totally did. We have our outline now is red instead of blue. So you were just able to make your first change in the Python programming language. Pretty cool. Um, and I'm going to keep playing until I see the next block, which is blue, but it's got red on it. How did that happen? Well, if you notice, um, this block now has two colors, and it must be that the blue that we changed to red was not only in this outline, but it was also right there on that block. It wasn't on the whole block um, because if we look closely we can notice that each of these blocks has two shades of color on them. It has like a lighter yellow and a darker yellow here, a lighter green and a darker green there. You might have to zoom in to see that. Um, but you start to learn a little bit more about the program with that unexpected change here where we have the red and the blue block uh, because of the change that we made. So that's that's one way that tinkering is, is really helpful to learn actually. Um, and it's helpful in the learning process. So if we scroll down at the code, we can see some parts of the code that are interesting. Um, and if we kind of look closer at it, we will notice perhaps that these capital O's are in the shapes that the blocks are in. 
And this probably is telling the computer, hey, um, this is the shape that I want the blocks to, to be in. So we could change that. We can make the game harder. We can make it easier. Let's, let's try doing both uh, in different ways. So let's make this 2x2 two two block, let's make it a 3x3 three three instead so it's harder. Um, it's harder to find a spot for it to fit. And wouldn't that just be cool? We can just determine what the shapes look like. Let's go in here and even make it hollow. Kind of crazy, but we'll see how it goes. And this this uh, long one, let's say it's it's always kind of hard for me um, to know where to put it. So let's let's make it shorter. And instead of four lengths, we're gonna make it just one piece. Um, so it'll be a lot shorter. Let's let's uh, let's play this game. Let's see uh, what this is like. And also before I save it, uh, well before I run it, um, I'll overwrite that. You'll notice that these blocks are, they come in pairs. Um, well some of them come in pairs and this one is in, in a pair. And when the shape is this um, one piece, if I press the up arrow key it will turn into this. And if it's if it starts out like this, if I press the up arrow key it will turn into that. So we'll see that in action when we run the program. Let's hit run module again. Let's see if it worked. Oh, right away we have that huge block with a hole inside. Where are we even going to put it? It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. And let's see if our other change worked. Let's uh, pull up that long block. Hopefully it comes up soon before I die, right? Before I lose. Okay, it's going to come up next. So where are we going to put that? Well, I could just press the up arrow key and turn it into one block. I'll fit it pretty much anywhere, right? So that's pretty awesome. And I can switch it back and forth like this. And look at that like cool change that you're able to make in the program. I, I think that teaching computer programming like this is fun. I, like, I don't know if you can tell, but I think that's like really cool. Um, and also it's because it's fun, it's a way to introduce kids and, and anybody really to the magic of computer programming and what you can do with it before getting into like all of the details and, and the rules about computer programming without kind of the context um, you know why not get them hooked first on what they can do with it and, and then go from there so I hope you've enjoyed this video and you've, and you've learned something about the Raspberry Pi um, feel free to comment below on the video for any STEM activities you'd like us to do and we'll try to make it happen STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and math we also have a website at climbingtree.xyz, that's .xyz, not .com. Climbingtree um, has a directory of STEM resources. There are a lot of really cool things on the internet out there and other places, um, and we kind of organize them into topics, and we link to them, and, and you can rate them and comment on them, how, how you use these resources, and, and we're trying to sort of build a community there about on STEM resources. And also there's a great blog at Climbing Tree, and there will be more to come. And so hope you visit that website, and thank you for watching. Have a great day.